They look pretty cool, don't they? What are they, I wonder? I've got four of them here, and if you look on the back, there are some electrical terminals. This one is in its box. Let's have a look at this. It was made for General Post Office, and it's got the code 3300 B. So after a little bit of looking online, I found this, and you can spot a row of them in this cute little manual switchboard. So these are for telephone systems, specifically private exchanges for use in offices. This particular one is a multi-phone, so multiple phones could call into this, so you could connect them all together and they could all speak. And that was used by the press back in the day to quickly distribute news. So what does it do? Well this one is partially deconstructed. If I move this little bit, you'll see. There you go. It looks just like one of them flip dots, doesn't it? Except these were used in the 1930s, so they're 1930s flip dots. Now actually, it's called the supervisory flap. And uh, who was the supervisor? Well, that was the telephone operator, of course, the telephonist, who was in charge of the manual switchboard. And these indicators tell you when there's a call in progress. But of course they didn't work like this with me doing this with my finger. They worked automatically with the electronic terminals that come in the back here and they switched themselves electromechanically. So let's give it a go. Let's try and get some of these working, shall we? The good thing with electromechanical stuff is normally it's pretty simple. Uh, that's why it's quite reliable. So there's probably not too much wrong with these. This one is pretty much as close as you're going to get to a new old stock one. It's even got this little bit of fabric that it travels with that stops the flap rattling all around. See if I open it up here. This little bit of fabric is held down by this outer cover and that stops the armature moving up and down. There's also a separate little glass lens that goes on there and is held in place by this. You may remember these electromechanical doll's eye indicators that do a similar job in my other big manual exchange. A little update on the manual exchange. I may have found a slight problem with it. Uh, huh. Hmm. Well, these both work off the similar principles. They both use electromagnetism to move mechanical parts. All along here in the doll's eye indicators, there's a coil of wire, loads and loads and loads of wire. And when you pass current through that, it makes a magnetic field and it attracts a little bit down here, which switches the little indicator up and down. Well, a similar type thing happens in here. You can actually see in here, here's the coil of wire and you connect to the two ends of the wire through the terminals on the back here. Doesn't matter which way around the positive and negative go, it's just a coil of wire. And if I connect it on the back here, oh, there you go. Yeah, it's working. See, these things are indestructible. Let's have a closer look at the mechanism. You've got this armature here, which is the actual bit, the metal plate that gets attracted to the magnetic coil. It's all the way back in this part. So that levers this way, and you see down at the bottom of the plate, it's connected to this little metal rod that goes along here and is actually hooked into the bottom of the plastic flap. So when the armature moves, moves the rod, and that levers up the indicator. And you can see, if I pull out this coil, and on the end of it, there is a spring. And that is what returns the armature to its outwards position, where the indicator is tucked up inside. So when there's no power, the spring is pushing the armature out, and that puts the flap up. And when the magnetic force turns on, it overcomes the spring, pulls the armature down, and that actuates the indicator. Pretty simple really. But there's one more trick up its sleeve because it's actually a switched indicator. Pretty clever. So you see again on the face of this coil there's a little switch. So there's a metal contact running around here and one running around here and they're not actually touching. They only touch when this one is pressed in. So now I've hooked it up to the continuity meter off the two terminals on the back and if I press the two contacts together there you go. And when the coil is put in the indicator, those two switch contacts are pressed together by this little screw here, and it's adjustable so you get the right amount of travel. So it's not just an indicator, it's actually an electrical relay as well. Good news is if you want an electromechanical relay switch in your synthesizer case, I make these modules, the 1606 electromagnetic switch. You can click on the demo or the shop link at the end of the video. So this one was the one in the worst condition, and uh, it's actually working pretty good. So, I mean, I'm feeling good about the rest of them. Uh, the only problem with this is it's missing the little screw here that holds the coil in place. But I've got a little brass one that will do the job. Here it is hooked up to the power and the meter, and now if I turn it on, there you go, working perfect. Even the same colour as the flip dots, and it's just funny looking at old black and white photos and not quite realising that, yeah, in the 1930s, um, they did have neon yellow stuff. Okay, we've got another one hooked up, let's see if this one works. Oh, pretty good, but uh, not 
working on the little switched contacts. I need to open it up and adjust that screw, I reckon. Oops, there you go, bit of a dirty lens. I do actually have some spares, so we might swap that one over. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power on. We'll see if it pushes down the switch. No, not quite enough, so we're gonna to have to put that screw in. Do that through the front, just screw in a few more times, and turn the power on. There we go, working perfect. Also give it a little dust and clean while we've got it open. And in a box dated 1969, we've got some spare glasses. Oh yeah, let's put that in there. So you put that on top there, and then that gets held down by this cover. There you go, you've got a fully working clean unit. This one here is switching on fine, but when you turn the power off, ah, it's not returning to its usual position. I found there's a little screw around the back here, and if you screw that on in, it moves the spring that we talked about earlier further on towards the armature and exerts more force on it. You can see here, there you go, lifting up the flap. There we are. So now if we turn it on, there we are, working perfect. We've got three working ones. Uh, save the best condition one till last. Let's have a look at this one. Obviously, we've got to remove this little cloth bit to get it working. Whoops. Looks good. The spring is returning the flap. Let's turn it on, see if it works. There we go. First time. Nice. So here's our four working indicators next to each other, and they've all been wired into my Uniselector sequencer, which is a 12-way switch as well as a sequencer. So I'm sending in 20 volts from my power supply, and that's getting switched sequentially to each of the four indicators. Let's have a little bit of fun. made use of the switch contacts. I want to save that for another video because we can do that with these as well. So I'm going to do some interesting stuff with that, maybe something a bit musical. And i got a whole backlog of uh, old vintagey stuff that would be fun to play with. And uh, I do videos much more than is on YouTube about all these kind of things uh, on Patreon. Just this last week, I did a half hour video just for Patreon members on these amazing electromechanical selectors from telephone exchanges, unit selectors, and two motion selectors, incredible mechanisms, very clever people who've dreamt up this stuff. So if you wanna support the channel and you wanna get some more cool stuff, Patreon is the place to go. And look, we've got a teleprinter in the workshop as well that needs to be restored. Oh, sorry, uh, two teleprinters. No, wait, three teleprinters. Oh, there's one under here as well. Uh, yeah, all right, cheers, thanks for watching.